So I pulled up some heat pump schematics. I put motion to them in hopes of making one of the best videos I possibly could on how these things work. Hope this helps a lot of people out there. Let's jump in. We are currently looking at the air handler and as you can see we have power coming into a set of breakers. This is 240 volts that is going to be powering our heat strips and we also have 240 volts coming into a transformer located inside the air handler which steps it down to 24 volts. Now this 24 volts is going to go through a fuse and ultimately it ends up on the R terminal on the terminal block of the control board in the air handler. So all of the low voltage, all of the control voltage in our entire system, it all starts right here. Now from here, our 24 volts is going to split off and go into two different places. We're going to have power going out to the R terminal on our defrost control board in the condensing unit outside and we have power going to the R terminal on our thermostat. The thermostat has to send out multiple signals to turn on different parts of the system. And we're gonna begin by putting the thermostat in cooling mode. Now in cooling mode, our thermostat has to send out a couple of signals to turn on different parts of the system. So we're gonna be sending out a signal on the G terminal and this will turn on the blower in our air handler to move air through the house. We have to send a signal out on the Y terminal and this will pull in the contactor on the outdoor unit so that our compressor and our condenser fan motor will come on. And we have to send out a signal on the O terminal and this is to power our reversing valve to put it into cooling mode. So when you have a thermostat with an OB terminal, basically all it's asking you is are you powering it to put it in cooling mode, which is O terminal, or are you powering it to put it in heating mode? But most manufacturers default in the heating position, so in cooling mode we're going to have to power this terminal. So now we're ready to head outside and look at a schematic for our heat pump condensing unit. On the left side of the screen here, we have our schematic for our outdoor condensing unit. On the right side of the screen, we have our previous wiring arrangement between the thermostat, the air handler terminal block, which is in the center, and the defrost terminal block, which is down below. Now in our schematic, our defrost terminal block is right here. And as I stated, we have power coming in from our air handler to power our defrost control board right here. Now this power is to power the board itself, LEDs, there is a defrost timer in the system that needs to be powered, which we will get to in defrost cycles. But for now, we need to bring in power on our O terminal. Now we need to make sure our reversing valve is in the proper position before the unit starts up. So when our power comes in on the O terminal, it will go through the reversing valve, which is right here on our schematic. And our reversing valve will be slid into the cooling position. Once our reversing valve is in the proper position, our signal will come in on our Y terminal. Now this will go through a low pressure switch and a high pressure switch we can see up here on our schematic. So as the power comes into our Y terminal, it will go up into our pressure switches and return back to the defrost control board. Now on this particular schematic, we have an M terminal where that 24 volts then re-exits the board and goes straight to the contactor. Now not all defrost control boards will have this M terminal. Some might have two Y terminals, but the principle is exactly the same either way. We have to go through pressure switches before we get to the contactor. And the whole reason for this is because we want to make sure our compressor isn't under high or low pressure conditions in the refrigerant before we start it up because that can potentially lead to damaging the compressor. Now once we have power to the contactor it will go through a coil and return on a common wire which goes back up to the air handler. Once this coil is energized it will close the contact and the high voltage will be able to now travel through the contactor and power up our fan motor and our compressor. All right, so let's focus on our high voltage for a minute. Let's bring in our 240 volts into the contactor. Let's bring in our 24 volts on the contactor coil, and now the contactor closes. 
Now from here, we're going to have power on one leg going up to the run windings on our compressor. And another one that goes up to the run winding on our condenser fan motor. From there, we're going to have a wire running up to our C terminal on our capacitor and our capacitor it will discharge on the H or Herm terminal to go to our start winding on the compressor. The common terminal on our compressor will return back to the other side of the contactor completing the circuit and our compressor begins to run and the capacitor's fan terminal will discharge to the start terminal on the condenser fan motor. The common terminal on our condenser fan motor will run back to the defrost control board, which there is a relay. So this is a relay right here. This is a normally closed relay. We will get into this when we get into a defrost cycle very soon. But for now, the relay is closed. The power will travel through back to the other side of the contactor, completing the circuit, and our condenser fan motor starts. Now what we're looking at here is the entire low voltage control system running in heating mode and you can see that everything is exactly the same with the only difference that the O terminal on the thermostat is not powered so we are not powering a reversing valve it defaults in the heating position. Now if this were a system where the reversing valve defaulted in the cooling position, then this is when our B terminal would power up, put our reversing valve into a heating position, and it would remain powered throughout the heating cycle. But today we're working with a system where the reversing valve defaults in heating mode, so we're not running with a reversing valve that is energized. Now let's move on to a defrost cycle. Now on the right, we have another schematic of a defrost control board. This one's a little more detailed. And we can see on this schematic, we have two relays. We have a high voltage defrost relay and a low voltage defrost relay. Now this high voltage defrost relay is the same relay on this other schematic right here that we went over with the condenser fan motor. And this is a normally closed relay. So whenever we're in heating or cooling mode, this relay is always closed. The low voltage defrost relay, we will get into in just a minute, but let's go ahead and bring our power into the R terminal. Now keep in mind here, the entire system is running in heating mode. Nothing is off, everything is powered. We're just focusing on the defrost cycle right now. So you can notice our power coming into our R terminal and it goes right into the low voltage defrost relay. Now this is a normally open relay, which means the power is going to stop there. It's not going anywhere. You can also see in the schematic that the power on the R terminal also goes down to our defrost timer. Now these defrost control boards, they have settings on them in increments of 30 minutes in which you can run a defrost cycle. So you'll see 30, 60, 90, sometimes 120. Now depending on what that setting is at, let's say it's at 30 minutes, what this defrost timer does is it accumulates the runtime of the unit in a heating mode. Now this is only actual runtime. It's not 30 minutes on a clock. It's 30 minutes of the unit actually running in heating mode. So even if it's interrupted, 15 minutes in, it meets set point, shuts down, it will count that as a 15 minute runtime. And when it starts back up again in another heating cycle, it will continue counting from that 15 minute mark until we hit the 30 minute set time. Now, once our defrost timer hits that set time, it will pass on that voltage to our defrost control board and this activates our defrost cycle. All right, so let's back up one step. Let's put all of our power back on the system. You could see the outdoor condensing unit, all the circuits are powered up. And on our defrost diagram on the right, our defrost timer has not yet gone off on its set point. Now let's go ahead and set off our defrost timer. It sends a signal back to the control board and now a defrost cycle begins. Now one of the first things that happens in a defrost cycle is the Y circuit to our contactor is going to get interrupted. The contactor will open and our outdoor unit will shut down. Our thermostat and our air handler inside, however, are not part of this process. As far as they're concerned, everything's still in heating mode and they're gonna continue on, unless you have a communicating thermostat and something much more complicated. 
Now a defrost cycle is actually the system running in cooling mode. One of the first things that have to happen is that we have to energize our reversing valve and put it back into a cooling position. But as I said, our thermostat's not part of this process, so how does that reversing valve get powered? And that is where the low voltage defrost relay comes in. Now this normally open relay will close and you can see that we have a circuit coming off the other side of that relay and goes directly down to the reversing valve, slides it into a cooling position and it returns back on a common which goes back up to the common terminal on our air handler and back to our transformer. Now you can see we have another circuit coming off of this low voltage defrost relay and it goes to our W terminal on the defrost board. That W signal will get sent up to the W terminal on our air handler and that will initiate the heat strips. That 24 volts off of the W wire will go to a heat strip relay. It will then go through a coil, come back out as a common, which makes its way back to the transformer. Now as this relay closes, it completes the circuit for our 240 volts from our breakers and that voltage can now travel through the heat strips themselves and they are now on generating heat while our outdoor unit is preparing for defrost mode. All right, so here we are back on our outdoor unit and as the low voltage defrost relay closes, our high voltage defrost relay will open and this breaks the common coming back from the fan motor to the contactor so what this does is it prevents our fan motor from operating once our outdoor unit comes back on in a defrost cycle. And the reason why we're doing this is because as we're melting the ice off the outdoor coil, the last thing we want to do is drag cold air across it. Now our outdoor unit is all set up, ready to start up in a defrost cycle. Our Y circuit is reactivated, contactor pulls in, and our outdoor unit starts back up with everything running minus the condenser fan motor. This defrost cycle will run for a few minutes and it will end by the Y signal being re-interrupted once again, shutting down the outdoor unit. Our low voltage defrost relay will open. We will lose the signal to our reversing valve. The reversing valve will revert back to its default heating position. We will also lose our signal up to our heat strips in our air handler. The heat strips will shut down. Our high voltage defrost relay recloses again and our Y signal is reactivated. Everything turns on and the whole system is back in a heating cycle. So now we're ready to cover auxiliary and emergency heat mode. Now auxiliary heat mode is like a second stage heat. If the temperature in the house doesn't seem to be increasing anymore and it's still below the set point, our thermostat is going to activate auxiliary heat mode. This will activate a W2 on our auxiliary terminal on our thermostat and go ahead and start up our heat strips. And this will be in addition to the heat pump running so that we can get the temperature up to set point. Now, emergency heat mode is also activates the heat strips, but this locks out the heat pump system. So on every single call for heat, the thermostat will immediately activate the heat strips without even trying the heat pump system. Now in Nest thermostats, this little star is your emergency heat terminal. And you may not always see two wires ran, one from auxiliary, one from emergency. Um, sometimes you will see a jumper between those two terminals. And this is done just to kind of save a wire from being ran. So for example, if we're running in auxiliary mode, it's gonna use that white wire off a of W2 or auxiliary going to the W terminal on the control board in our air handler to activate the heat strips. If we are in emergency mode, the jumper is just gonna go back to W2 auxiliary and use the same wire to do the same thing.